Welcome everyone to Cinema Spotlight. Diving into Peter Jackson's career, we will be talking about the first part in a trilogy that is one of the more divisive prequels in recent memory, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. Jumping into the theatrical version of The Hobbit, we find ourselves 60 years just before the events of Lord of the Rings. We follow the adventures of Bilbo in his younger years, recruited by Gandalf the Grey. Bilbo and Gandalf set off on a quest with Thorin Oakenshield and the Company of Twelve Dwarves, trying to reclaim their homeland in Erebor. Much like Lord of the Rings, it's a story of a fellowship going from point A to point B. But like all epic fantasies, the subplot does indeed complicate, hinder, separate our characters, and allude to future dangers. It's of course a prelude to Lord of the Rings, after all. And the critical consensus, as I've listened over the years, come from ordinary people and not of the critical nature. Really, it comes down to pacing, length, and the overall fact that one book was turned into three films. Ultimately, the people looking at this on a, on a deeper scale, like myself, notice various different things. I myself did not notice the higher film rate. That never bothered me, but it has bothered others. What did bother me was the overuse of CGI orcs, that was far more noticeable. Even some moments that defy even the fantasy rules of gravity. Try wrapping your head around that one. My opinion really resides to The Hobbit An Unexpected Journey to be kind of a lot of fun. And I really enjoy this one more out of the entire trilogy. I felt the energy of what the original trilogy spoiled me with all those years ago. The scope, the sense of adventure, and silly moments, the spectacle, and boisterous score from Howard Shore. Martin Freeman as the young Bilbo Baggins was and has been an excellent choice. All the dwarves casted were unique in their appearances, but we don't get to know their personalities all that well. But they work out just fine for the first film. The late Ian Holm, who played played Bilbo in the original films does make an appearance, and to its credit, The Hobbit does try to show him rather young during the events of Lord of the Rings, but you can kind of notice he has a heavy amount of makeup on. Now, of course, while I had a lot of fun with this movie, and there was so much that I can forgive, the certain things that kind of work but don't work, but you can just kind of say, hey, just have fun, it's all about the adventure, it's the stakes. The stakes aren't exactly all that well pronounced. Various action scenes don't establish this very well, so we see these characters kind of walk away unscathed in certain moments. And despite all this, like I said, I do enjoy that. But you have to realize in this first film, no one major dies. Basic case in point, there's a sequence in the goblin lair with our characters trapped, but they have so much against them, and it is literally the most entertaining action sequences for me by far. The dwarves and Gandalf try to escape with hundreds of goblins trying to kill them, and it's in this moment where things go almost too perfectly, long-winded, and almost unbelievable to the point where you swear you're watching a video game instead. To kind of back up here, we're going to talk about some of the dwarves, and one in particular, Richard Armitage. He plays Thor in Oakenshield. He's kind of our Aragorn for these set of films. He is really good and has a semi-strained relationship with Bilbo because he doesn't believe that Bilbo wants to be on this quest. He kind of gives him crap throughout the films and you kind of get it. You're not necessarily against their relationship, but you're also hoping that they do come together at a certain point. Seeing Ian McKellen as Gandalf, oh my god, he is such a welcome sight. I swear to god, if it wasn't for Aragorn being my all-time favorite character, it would just be Gandalf, because Gandalf is so amazing. And where would I be if I didn't talk about Andy Serkis as Gollum? It'd be a crime not to mention him. And while the scenes that he's in take up just enough time and in a very entertaining fashion. I kind of want more of Gollum, but then again, there's only so much you can actually really do with his insanity. So when Bilbo and Gollum meet and the ring is finally established in this regard, I was surprised on how effective and funny it was to watch and kind of refreshing to see like a riddle war between these two. So all in all, all of this is great. If you guys really want me to come down to a consensus about this film, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is not a perfect film. I know where it stands on the totem pole of people loving or hating or disliking it. There are people who love Lord of the Rings and cannot stand The Hobbit. I will hate to say this, but there are people who love the films of The Hobbit more than The Lord of the Rings. As I draw this review to a close, 
I have to actually express how little of the extended edition of The Hobbit really had to offer. The original runtime of theatrical is 2 hours and 49 minutes. The extended is just 2 minutes over the 3 hours. It's not very much. It's pretty basic. I think you could have a good time with either or. I actually loved The Hobbit, The Unexpected Journey, and would own on DVD. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic one. And as usual, comment below, let me know, and please be kind and reasonable. Be good to yourself, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.